Hey y'all, so I'm back with another review and this time I'm going to be discussing the movie Origin. I finally had the opportunity to watch it over on Prime Video. I personally wasn't ready to go to the movies and see this, so when I did see that it was streaming on Prime Video, I paid my $5.99 and if you are interested, you can go there and watch it as well. Now, there are a lot of spoilers in this review, so if you are planning to watch it and you don't want to know the story of Origin, then I advise you to go ahead and save this and come back later and watch it. As always, I'm gonna give you a synopsis of what the movie is about, and then I'm gonna give you my own personal perspective and takeaways from what I gathered from the movie. Now, Ava DuVernay is the one who directed this movie. She is an African-American filmmaker. Sometimes I like what she does, and sometimes I don't. What I'm not gonna do is tear down a black filmmaker. I feel like there are there is range and room for all kinds of stories to be told. So even if I don't like something, I can still admire and respect the work that went into it. All right, so now that we got that out the way, let's go ahead and get into a brief synopsis. So Origin is about this writer. Her name is Isabel Wilkerson, who is played by Ajanu Ellis. So she's been asked to look into the tape recordings of George Zimmerman and the Trayvon Martin um, on a live thing. And initially she's reluctant to do it, which kind of prefaced this conversation of race and why do we always automatically say that everything that happens in America is due to racism. And so that kind of sparks this dialogue, which I found to be interesting, but she does end up going ahead and looking into this story after the loss of her husband. His name is Brett and is played by the actor John Berthal. If you know him, he is the guy who played in The Walking Dead. She loses her husband unexpectedly. I think, I don't think they ever really tell us what happens, but it appears that maybe he might've had either a heart attack or maybe a bad stroke or she came out of the shower and she found him laying on the ground. Then after he passes away, not too long after that, she loses her mother as well. And it sends her on this quest to basically find out the origin story of why humanity, humans, people do the things that they do to each other. And so on this journey, basically you have a past and present type of situation. So she is one traveling across the world, learning different things about caste systems in different societies. It compels her to travel to India where they had a huge caste system that is something that they deal with. And then there are the past stories. So it takes us back to Nazi Germany where Adolf Hitler got his ideas of implementing the Holocaust through watching the enslavement of our ancestors, African-Americans here in the U.S. And so there is this conversation of is it racism or is it caste? She pulls this all together by bringing these two universal stories. A man named August who was a member of the Nazi camp who fell in love with a woman who was Jewish. And then there's a secondary story that includes a mixed race couple, Allison and Elizabeth Davis, who are friends with white abolitionist couples who they work together to create this book about race. So you'll see all of these stories intertwined and happening simultaneously as they move from storyline to storyline and then bring it back all full circle with the ending and her giving her thesis on why what is happening in America and what happened with Trayvon Martin is not racism, but instead it's caste. Now I'm gonna go ahead and stop the story there because I wanna talk about my personal feelings in regards to what I took away from this movie. So one of the conversations that comes up, she's sitting with a group of friends, but the conversation that she was having at the table, the wife was basically telling her that the Holocaust was more horrifying, was worse than US enslavement of African Americans because the whole point of the Holocaust was extermination, whereas the whole point of US enslavement was subjugation and while they you know went back and forth with this conversation kind of allowed the Jewish woman to rest on the fact that what she was saying was accurate and I disagreed with that a little bit I'm not here to say which one was worse than the other I think that they both were ugly and I think that they both were gruesome and hours lasted longer but at the same time I do understand that there were two different agendas with the same behaviors that were occurring. Isabel Wilkerson, she goes to India and she talks with a lot of the Indians there about their caste system and how they relegate people to the inferior class, touchables, and as a result of that, they do in the inferior class do work that requires them to clean out sewage drains and pipes and things like that with their bare hands. So they just very, treat them very inhumanely in this story. And so the conversation of, is it racism or is it caste? And Isabel Wilkerson makes this argument that it's not racism, it's caste. I've heard this narrative before where it's not racism it's classism it's not racism it's patriarchy it's not racism you know we always try to find a way to excuse racism and say that it is something else now the issue I take with this argument that it's not racism it's caste is because in every example she gives Nazi Germany she talks a lot about how the Germans were trying to exterminate other Germans who were Jewish and how the Holocaust was a caste system and so yes white people who are harming other white people. And then she talks about the Indian caste system. So again, Indian people who are harming other Indian people, but she tries to also throw 
American, African-American enslavement, and same thing. And that's where I disagree because when it comes to African-American genocide, enslavement, it's race and it's caste. And so this is where I disagree with his argument that it's not racism, it's caste system. Because while you show the example of Nazis doing this to Jews and you show the example of Indians doing this to other Indians, you try to equate what had happened to us here in the U.S. under caste, which it is that, but it is also still racism because our oppressor was white and we are African-American. Now, if you wanted to equate colorism in the caste conversation, I would totally 100% agree with that because when they classified many people, including mixed race and non, as all Negro, all African-American, all black, then you had this hierarchy of people who were differentiating between those who were probably fuller or closer to fuller African and darker uh, being persecuted by people within their own racial group categorization uh, by skin color and featureism and texturism, which is something that we are still trying to undo to this day. So if you would, if you were going to say that colorism is a caste system, caste system, I would agree. If you were going to try to say that our enslavement and our genocide by white people was a caste system, I disagree. They took our views, our looks, our image, our spirituality, our everything, our essence of us, and they turned that into a racial epithet that put us on the bottom, but that is them persecuting us, which is not the same thing. So I had a little bit of a difference of opinion. Now, of course, this is all us arguing semantics at this point, but at the end of the day, that's what this movie is supposed to do. Inspire thought, inspire discussion, and also just make us examine our behaviors. Because at the end of the day, it's all disgusting. Finding reasons in this, from being at the top of a caste system, whether if it's based on race or not, uh, they want things to stay the same. And those of us who are on the bottom of the caste system, you know, we want to change things because we don't like the way we're being treated. And not to only mention that, but why is it that whenever we're having this conversation of it's not race, it's this, we never take into consideration that in regards to African Americans or just African people in general, globally across the globe, we are always the target, even by those who went through their own caste system mistreatment. And so if people can see the oppression in their own racial experience against other people within their own race or other ethnic groups that are similar to them, then why is it that we become the global rank to place us at the bottom of the caste system and that people always want to hold us in that position, including the people who are in their own countries persecuted by their own people. That's another thing that kind of just gnaws at me and makes me feel like it's really hard for us to overcome all of this racial divide stuff and you know xenophobic and all the isms in general it's really hard for us to overcome that because a lot of us just want to be the one we want next a lot of us just want next we want to be the next one to do what others have done to us traditionally and i feel like that's the wrong framework and that's why unity across the globe and across the board can't be met because a lot of us are okay with there being this type of mistreatment in the world as long as you are not the group who has to endure it. And I think that sucks. That's why I'm effing with a lot of y'all, including some of my own people. So that's my piece on it. If you guys have watched the movie, you tell me what you think about it or if you have something to contribute to the conversation in general, go ahead and drop it down in the comments and always like, subscribe, and let's be friends.